Hi, this is Sweet Life and I'm Natasha, back at it with a review and discussion of The Fugitive. I am a huge fan of action movies, and before my it was before my time, but Harrison Ford was and arguably still is a pretty big action star. I know he's known for quite a number of movies, but probably most prominently for Indiana Jones and Star Wars and whatnot. Indiana Jones I've probably seen bits and pieces, I've never seen Star Wars. My favorite Harrison Ford movies, though, are his standalone films. So, for example, I love Witness. I love The Fugitive. And I think there's also one where, like, he's the president on a plane or something like that. Really cool movies where not only is there a lot of action, but there's also, like, the story is also really good. And so in the case of The Fugitive, it's based on a real-life case, which in listening to a lot of true crime podcasts, watching documentaries, programs, and things like that, I've learned about about the case of Dr. Kimball. I believe it was like back in the 40s or 50s or something like that, was believed to have murdered his wife. His life was turned upside down as, you know, in most cases when a woman is murdered or killed or something along those lines, often the person that committed the crime, as with most people, is someone that you know. And in the case of women, it tends to be a current or past romantic partner. And so with that, Kimball was suspected of having been the person that murdered his wife. And over the years, he was investigated, court cases and whatnot, as with many people, didn't have the perfect life, didn't have the perfect marriage, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you killed your wife. He was the first person that the police looked at, but in this case, within the movie, Kimball, given that he was a doctor, um, I don't know what the real Kimball looked like, although I've heard about the case through podcasts and whatnot, but I think he's generally described as being reasonably attractive, if not handsome. And so when cases like this come up, they tend to get a lot of media attention, which was the case with Kimball. Now, granted, by this point in time, the case occurred several decades in the past before the movie was released. But in the years between, I think maybe in the 60s or 70s or something like that, there was a television show, The Fugitive. Um, this person had been suspected of killing their wife. And then in the case of the story, escaping custody and whatnot, trying to prove his innocence. And so here you then have the Harrison Ford movie, which it's, it's not like a remake of sorts, but more like influenced by based on the TV show. Never haven't seen the television show, but assuming that it would have played out over several more episodes where here you have the movie that's about two hours, the gist of the story is pretty much the same, where it's inspired by this original case of Dr. Kimball. Harrison Ford plays Dr. Kimball, who's gone out to an event, a professional event with his wife, and is then called away to surgery. When he arrives home, calls the police to tell him that he's found his wife has been attacked within their home and is seriously injured, if not dead. The police arrive at the scene. They investigate. Um, given that there's no signs of forced entry, he has some scratches and other things like that on him. His fingerprints are the only ones in the house. They immediately begin to look at him as the prime suspect, as would generally be the case. And things play out rather quickly in the beginning of the movie, where he ends up being convicted and is then transported to prison. It's not really a clear what the time frame is because all of this happens like within the first few minutes of the movie beginning. But he's being transported from prison to serve out his sentence. So some of the other prisoners on the bus have organized a prison break, right? They're working together and um, they put together like a ruse that allows them to overpower the guards. But what ends up happening is the bus comes to a stop on railroad tracks, which results in Kimball. He's not like a part of the plot to escape, but he kind of gets wrapped up in this thing. And given that the bus comes to a stop on these railroad tracks and a train is coming, which is very inconvenient, he ends up having to jump from the vehicle to save his life. This was after trying to save some other people on the bus. So the federal marshals show up on the scene, which would, for those from outside the country, these are the people that are tasked with apprehending like escaped convicts, transporting prisons, um, you know, from one place to another within the prison system. 
And also I think like they help to execute certain types of warrants or they look for certain wanted people. With these prisoners now having escaped, the U.S. Marshals come into play and the team is headed up by Tommy Lee Jones, who is like this very determined marshal just out to get his man over the course of the movie. It's really this story of Dr. Kimball now having escaped, trying to take advantage of this opportunity to prove its innocence so he doesn't have to go back to jail. But in the meantime, he's having to stay a step ahead of the marshals where trying to, they're trying to gather up all of the criminals and return them to custody. But Dr. Kimball from the very beginning has been expressing his innocence and is really on a mission to prove his innocence. Um, so there's like two stories going on at the same time, but they're related where he's trying to investigate and gather evidence to figure out who really murdered his wife. Because in proving that someone else murdered his wife, that he wasn't a part of the ploy, then, you know, that should be enough to clear his name. But it's like this thing of having the marshals breathing down your neck. They're on you at every turn. The places where he frequents, they have eyes on anything related to his life prior to his incarceration. And so it makes for a really cool movie because on the one hand, you have this kind of like whodunit thing, him trying to clear his name. But then at the same time, there's this story of being on the run, of being hunted down by the marshals. So there's like, tension throughout near misses and whatnot throughout the movie he's basically investigating this crime that's been committed against his wife and now also against him and so it's like that side of the story is really interesting because you see him trying to gather evidence trying to figure out what happened but then you also have this other side of him trying to keep the federal marshals at bay and so it makes for a really exciting movie it starts out with them being like out in the wilderness because they're being transported what seems to be a good distance. Typically when you're um, at trial or about to go to trial, you'll be held at like the local jail, like the local lockup, which is typically in the city, right? Or somewhere nearby. But then it's like once you're convicted, especially if you're sentenced to a lengthy prison sentence, then you are going to go to like prison, right? Um, and it depends on if it's state, federal, or what have you. Those types of prisons tend to be further removed from towns, right? Like generally you, you have jails within cities, but prisons, especially like supermaxes, those tend to be in very remote areas. I'm sure it's in part to discourage or at least make it more difficult for convicts to escape because this is where people who commit or theoretically who commit more serious crimes, this is theoretically where you would be held, right? Like you would serve, I think it's like if you're doing less than a year, you might serve that time in jail. But beyond that, you know, they're probably going to take you and send you to a prison. And so it's like people who are looking at more lengthy sentences, I would think are probably more likely to escape. And so with that, they try to make it pretty difficult. So the movie starts with these prisoners being transported, moving through this remote area. And so the early part of the film is really about survival. You know, he spends... I think it's like a few days out in the wilderness, but it starts out with him in this remote area trying to escape the marshals. They hunt him down and you have this really iconic scene where he's standing on a dam and it's like he either takes his chances with the marshal or he takes a chance at freedom. And so it's like he jumps from this dam and that just sets the pace for the rest of the movie. This really suspenseful ride with him. He eventually makes his way to Chicago. The marshals are on his heels. He's trying to solve the case. Just a lot going on. If you like anything around these kinds of lines, like who done it, action movies, just a great story, I think you would enjoy this. And I highly recommend The Fugitive. Thanks for tuning in. To be sure you don't miss any episodes, subscribe or follow the show in your favorite podcast player. And if you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. I'd also appreciate it if you share it on social media.